so I bought the RTX 2060 to see if it's worth buying in 2024. The reason I'm making this video is because I have been scrolling through eBay in the last couple of days and I have noticed that there's a lot of GPUs that you can find for a really good price. Like this 2060 which I found. I bought it for around £110, which is way below average. Because if you use the website averagefinder.com, it basically shows the average price of every item on eBay. And when I went on their website to check the RTX 2060's price, it usually is £130 to £140. So this was an absolute steal. Initially, I was sketched out by the price is way below average, but I bit the bullet and I got the GPU and the original box it came in, which was really nice. But anyways, enough yapping and let's install the graphics card into my rig and benchmark some games. So for the benchmark, we're pairing the GPU with a Ryzen 5 7600, 32 gigabytes of 6000 mega transfers RAM and an NVMe SSD. For the first game, we're testing out Rainbow Six Siege to see how it runs. And in game, I'm getting around 250 to 300 FPS with low to medium graphics at 1080p, which I think is honestly amazing for this GPU. But to be honest, this is an eSport title, so it's more CPU bound than GPU. So let's move on to a game which actually demands your GPU. And the next game will be Helldivers 2. So with Helldivers, I was pleasantly surprised that this GPU was actually able to run this game. Since it's a pretty demanding title, even after a couple months of the release, I'm not really sure if they did too many optimizations. As we can see with the stats, the GPU is being fully used, hitting a constant 90 or more percent, which is good news. The settings were on medium at 1080p once again, and we got a smooth 60 to 70 FPS, which is more than playable for this 110 pound card, which only has 6GB of VRAM. But the problem with this test is, who is buying an AM5 CPU and pairing it with a 4 year old entry level graphics card? So now I'm going to move on to something more quote unquote realistic, and I'm going to pair the RTX 2060 with an Intel i5 7600K, which is all going to be housed in this really compact mini ITX build which I recently made. So for Siege, we dropped from 250 FPS with the AM5 CPU, to now getting around 130 to 200 FPS with the Intel CPU, which is a huge hit to FPS, but it was to be expected as the CPU is now pushing seven years old now, which is crazy. But 130 to 200 FPS is totally playable. For Helldivers, the FPS drop wasn't as drastic, but the visuals tank. I had to drop from medium all the way to low with the new setup, which in my opinion makes the game unplayable. As these sorts of games, players want to aim for nice visuals, but hey, if you like potato graphics and want to play your favorite games, then go for it. It just ain't my cup of tea. Now onto the final conclusion, is the GPU worth buying? It totally depends. Now, before you spam comments and dislikes, hear me out. It honestly depends on the price you can get the GPU for. If the 2060 you're buying is more than 130 to 140 pounds, don't bother getting it, as you can get the RX 5700 XT, which blows this GPU out of the water and has 8 gigs of VRAM instead of 6. So who's this GPU really for? Well, it's definitely a good purchase for PC flippers such as myself, as customers are more enticed to purchase a PC with a NVIDIA-based graphics card than an AMD card. I have proof of this because I had two PCs. One had the RTX 2060 and it was a white PC build, sold in under two weeks. The AMD PCR build was black and red themed and it sold in two months. It's crazy, but what can you do? I would also absolutely recommend this GPU if you find it for a banging price, such as £110. But if not, just get the RX 5700 XT, save yourself the money, get better performance, and make sure to subscribe because up next is the GTX 1070, and that should be coming out sometime this week. <laughs> I don't know when, but sometime this week.